Did you know that we typically judge a person within the first 10 seconds of engaging them? Either on a professional side, personal side, or even if we as ourselves as a consumer, right? Like as a, as a general consumer, whether we're going to buy from this person or buy from that company or buy from that brand, we usually have that figured out within the first 10 seconds of engaging with their representative or with that individual, right? And this is just in general. Within, within five to 10 seconds, we know right away whether or not we're going to deal with that person or we're going to work with that company. It's crazy, right? And so if you knew this was true and if you actually like analyze how you've made your decisions and, and realize that it's not only you know from the consumer standpoint of how they judge us of whether or not they're going to take us on or, or hire us to do the job, but we as salesmen, we do the exact same thing. Am I, am I wrong? Within the first five to 10 seconds from hearing this prospect's name, their goal, their, their first question, we judge them whether or not they're worth our time. You see, here's the, here's the default with that, or here's the, uh, oh man, here's the fault in that type of thought process is because as salespeople or as sales representatives, we are literally our income is based on how many sales we make, right? And so, and so if, if you put that together, then you would only think it's in our best interest to help and sell as many people as we can. And I, and I, and I, and I want to put those two words closely together, help and sell. They're basically the same thing, right? Like, cause if you think about it, selling is all about serving. And if you think any otherwise, or if you think any different than that, then that's problem number one, <laughs> is that if you think selling is all about hitting your bonuses or hitting your tears or hitting your quota for that day, man, I got some, I got some fucking facts for you in this video, boo-boo. So stick around because I'm going to educate you on how important it is to, to really pay attention to that first 10 second impression. Coming back to the episode, what I want to do is I want to share with you some interesting facts on um, on how our consumers typically make their decision. And when I say make their decision, I'm not talking about make their decision to you know sign the dotted line or to pay a particular price. I'm talking about a decision to further engage with you, to further converse with you, to complete your application, to comply with your request, to answer your questions. And so they make a decision within the first 10 seconds of whether or not they're going to play nice, basically, right? And so it's not just about the decision of whether or not they're going to buy from you. And, and I think because we have such a consolidated amount of, of, of experience or information, it's very common in this day and age because of technology that we oftentimes see chapter 20 without even knowing or reading chapter one, right? Without understanding that that chapter two, three, four, and five lead up to chapter 20. But since we're so focused on chapter 20, in this example, the sale, sometimes we try and bypass all 19 chapters before then. When in reality, if you just jump straight to chapter 20, you're not gonna know the full gist or the story or the meat of it all. Right, you ever hear that saying? Like, this is the meat, <laughs> the meat and potatoes, <laughs> right? And I, I used to have this one sheet when I sold, and it was called the hot button sheet. And it had real interesting questions on there that at first glance, I didn't really understand what it was. I didn't understand what it meant. But it helps me today. <laughs> it helps me today now understand where that prospect's thought process is, what they perceive as value. Because we know so much about our industry, oftentimes we find ourselves trying to rewire our prospects into what they should believe is valuable. When in reality, when you try to change someone else's way of thinking instead of help improve or help uh, guide their way of thinking, get it? There's, there's a difference. If you're trying to rewire someone's thought and say, hey man, you think the sky is blue, but really it's light blue, right? Or, or you think the sky is red, but the sky is blue. And you're, you're trying to, to 
convince someone, maybe that's the word I should have said, is you're trying to convince them that their reality is not true. And the problem with that is though, is when someone, someone, right, someone who you don't know, someone who is a stranger, someone who has a biased opinion like a salesman, that as a consumer, we're, we are brought up and trained to, to compare, right? We're brought up and trained to avoid, to, we, we are actually trained from, from young children that it's okay to lie to salespeople. You ever, you ever know that? Like, like you ever knock on the door, like if you're out there hustling or you call somebody and you ask them like, hey, is James or Jim home? And then the kid, you can hear them say, hey mom, they want you on the phone. Just tell them I'm not here. Oh, uh, my, my mom says she's not here. Like, boo boo, I just heard your mom say that she's there, <laughs> right? Or some shit like that. You, does that make sense? So it's okay to lie to, to uh, a salesman. So this is how people are are coming up and, and viewing at, at salespeople. And this is why one of my main messages here is that you gotta, you gotta shift your, your image as a salesman and, to, and, and really transform it into a consultant. And that's why my sales script, if you look at you know, the verbiage on it, there's nothing about it that sounds like a salesman. And if you haven't seen the sales script yet, I'm gonna hook you up. There is a link below the notes on this video, right? Like if you hit that little down arrow, you scroll down or you hit read more, there's a hyperlink that says free sales script. Get a gander, request it. Just be sure you don't request it to your business email address. You're gonna wanna make sure you use your primary personal email address so you can get to your phone or what have you. Because if you use your business email address, it's gonna kick back my domain because it's coming from a salesremaster.com. And if you haven't visited the site, boo boo, go check out the site. Now, the main site is under construction, but at least you have access to you know some samples and also Sales Remaster University and a link to all of the social channels that Sales Remastered is on. Anyway, thought I'd mention that. But going back to you know that that immediate 10 second impression, why a 10 second impression is important in this day and age is because there is a plethora of options. The per, the people that we typically engage with are are very are you know they're they're it's very easy for them to lie. It's very easy and they're taught it's okay, right? They're taught it's okay to lie to a salesperson because we're protecting ourselves. But it's very easy nowadays for people to lie. And so there's that one saying buyers are liars. Well in today's society, in today's marketplace, that couldn't be more true. Because all your prospect has to do is tell you, ah, nah, we've thought about it. We're gonna go ahead and not do anything. Or we're gonna wait for the market. Or I'm gonna see what my current service provider is going to give. Or I'm gonna think about it and then just go ghost on you. And 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 here, this is probably within the most valuable pieces within this video. So if you're watching it eight minutes in and eight seconds in, uh, this is one major important piece of this video. And that is, if you analyze your actions throughout the day, and I, I want you to pay attention to how much time you spend chasing deals that no longer respond to you. Chasing deals like, like it doesn't even necessarily need to be chased. You could probably have a set system of leaving a voice message, leaving a, a text, and leaving an email, and then giving two calls, right, just in case. <laughs> and I want you to think about how many times you do that. So there's some that haven't engaged with us or responded to us for damn near a week but every day we're steadily given three or four different attempts. And you see, the problem is though with that is, is every single attempt and missed call, you become that guy or you become that girl. Like, oh man, here comes Daniel again. Fuck, this guy always fucking calls me, <laughs> right? And now it's even easier. Just like it's easy for our buyers to, to lie to us, it's also easy for them to block our number. And so they can mute our phone number. We wouldn't even know. And so every time we send them a message, we're muted but we think we're doing something. But I want you to pay attention to that because five minutes here, five minutes there, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, that shit adds up. And so if you're in sales, more than likely you're not in sales for the hourly salary. You're not doing your thing because you love the base, right? And I hope you're not. I hope you're not on here right now relying on some OT, like you figured out the system, right? Like, man, I always work OT in the last week on bonus week because I get paid more pimping and you're proud of yourself for that. Get the fuck out of here. We're not here for no hourly or no overtime, boo-boo. Keep, keep 
progress in your mindset rewire the way you think right and you might be like yo d man you just told me you can't rewire the way people think you can't convince them anything different well i'm not trying to convince you anything different if anything i'm showing you that you need to think different i'm showing you that this is the process and this is how you do it and so and so with regards to your 10 second impression the key is though is that you don't sound like a salesman you don't sound like uh, you don't even want to sound like a consultant right off the bat. You know, you want to sound very human. You want to sound very likable. And there's a mis there's a there's a misunderstanding of of today's salesmen to be likable. When they're trying to be likable, they're like, "Hey, how you doing? Oh man, I thank you so much for giving me a call. It's a great day here. I appreciate you. How'd you how's your day go? Oh, uh, <laughs> like that fake ass." <laughs> People can sense that shit because it's not genuine, man. Like you ever you ever meet a salesperson like that? Like you could just tell that they're fake as fuck. You know, you don't want to be that person because again, within the first five, ten seconds, they're gonna judge you. But if you're very personable, if you're very real, if you're just being yourself, whether you are brand new or whether you are a seasoned veteran, you are just being yourself. You're not going, you're not trying to be someone you're not. And, and the script works perfectly that way because there's no, there's no specific tonality you need to deliver besides being serious or besides being you know, personable and being real. But ultimately what it does is it, is, it, is it sets up the expectation and frames the conversation in a way that you take control of that call. And within the first 10 seconds, their very first impression of you is, is you're reliable, you're not gonna waste their time, you are the authority, and that they're going to have information that they need regardless, right? And in the very least, you're going to show them where they can get the right information. Now think about that, because as you know, I've said a few times, sales or, or, or this hustle or this game, you know, besides sales, life in general is is a chess game. It's not chesser, check chessers. It's not checkers. And so it's really all about positioning. And so if you think about it, like you got to position yourself right from the very beginning. One of my very first lessons from a mentor, and I didn't even know what mentor was. I, I was so young. I, this this person told me this and it literally stuck in my head. And I for every so often, I keep repeating it. It's weird. I got this information when I was about 20 years old. That's damn near 17 years ago. What, 17, it is 17, it is 17 years ago. But, but where I'm getting at is today, it still rings through damn near half my life, you know, half my life ago, <laughs> I got this one piece of information and it, every single year that I get older, it just makes more and more sense. So much so that I implement in everything I do now. And that piece of advice is this, is that, is that in everything you do, you need to put yourself in the position that will increase your likelihood to succeed. It's all about positioning. And I had no idea, right? I was so young and so, and so immature at the time, positioning, I was like, yeah, I got that position for you, boo-boo. <laughs> but that's where my mind was. So now as I get older, now as I evolve and I see it in different situations, whether it is in relationship, whether it's in family, whether it's in negotiation, whether it's in your professional highlight reel, you know, your, your career, it's all about positioning. So how do you want to position yourself that will cover your ass? Get it? So I hope that this video makes sense and really consider your first five to 10 second impression and, uh, and think about how you're being perceived. Record yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and, and, and say your normal script. Do you even smile when you talk, right? Are you serious or are you intimidated? And if you are, it's okay. Own that shit. That's all you gotta do. Just be real, right? And, just, and, and, and you might be like, yo, D, man, if I be real, they're not gonna like me. No, boo-boo, you don't like you. You have this perception because, again, you're focused on chapter 20, right? You, you think that because of the rejection or because you possibly might get rejected, you actually stunt your growth. When in reality, it's not about the result. It's about the process of getting to the result. And you hear this, right? You hear that cliche saying like, like, like enjoy the process. No, boo-boo. What they're talking about is that you got to go through it. You got to earn that shit, right? They're, the athletes you see or the people at the top of their game that you see right now had to go through that same shit. You can't just bypass chapter 1 through 19 and go straight to chapter 20 just because that dude, like, you just see their chapter 20. Get it?
And so I'm trying to use this analogy and I hope it makes sense. And if it did, please comment, like, and subscribe. Share this video with someone else that you like. And don't forget to check out the special on Sales Remaster University. Man, this is your opportunity right now to get a course that is going to pay for itself tenfold. Not only that, but it's going to help you create and implement a system that's going to have everyone around you in operations eager to work with you, eager to help you. Your clients are going to be eager to buy from you. They don't care about the price. They don't care about the rate. You know what they care about? They care about working with you boo boo so check that shit out there's a link right below the video and i'll see you inside and just fyi i don't curse inside those digital courses what i do though is help you really understand the process and create a system that you can duplicate and scale yourself as a sales professional as a business owner as a consultant whatever you decide to do with it boo boo the sky is the limit and I hope you take advantage of this course because that offer is limited and it will expire soon. I'll see you inside.